You know, if people would have told me four or five years ago that by the end of 2020, we'd have 80% of the top and most popular MMORPGs on Steam, I'd have said, mm, that's pretty unlikely. But here we are. By the end of this year, our libraries are going to be pretty stacked and there's some big positives that people tend to overlook. So that's what I want to talk about in today's video, a new premiere of a series I'm doing called MMO IMO. I'm Jerome Adrian. Let's get the discussion started. MMOs have always had a presence on Steam in some shape or form over the last 10 years, like both The Elder Scrolls Online's and Final Fantasy XIV's launches back in 2014, to Black Desert Online's multi-regional versions taking over in 2017, and of course, the rise of the Steam indie MMO circuit that has given life and a platform to plenty of self-funded and published titles over the years. Not all of them good, but most of all, they have contributed to the growth of the MMO presence on the platform. Today, we have such a good mix, from classics like Lord of the Rings Online, Dungeons & Dragons Online, EVE Online to Neverwinter, the host of Korean MMOs, and of course, the recent arrivals of Star Wars The Old Republic and Fantasy Star Online 2. Now, in the more immediate future, two more titles are coming to Steam. RuneScape, a huge classic, will arrive on October 14th, while Guild Wars 2 will land in November. This is fantastic for both the games and the player. Recent examples have shown us what a boost launching on Steam could give to an existing or ailing MMO. Take Star Wars The Old Republic for example. Its launch on Steam back in July of this year saw a pretty large influx of new players who's never played the game before, which resulted in higher population for all manner of Star Wars The Old Republic content, and that in return drove sales of things on the infamous cartel market cash up which keeps Bioware open for much longer, and their overlords at EA happy. Hell, we may even see a better expansion next time around. So you can imagine what this will do to games with similar traits, like Guild Wars 2 and RuneScape who have been around for quite some time and could use some fresh blood. From a player perspective, having all our favorite MMOs on Steam is an obvious plus. It's convenient to have all launchers in one place, and for me personally, I get to pay for things in my own regional currency without the BS exchange hikes. Not to mention all the sales, the achievements, being able to see player activity charts, and you have at your fingertips literally hundreds of MMOs to discover, and you'll probably find new games you like. And you can also see and smell the bullshit of a scam game from miles away, thanks to Steam reviews. The early access program is divisive, yes, but for me, it's been great keeping track of upcoming in-development MMOs, and this year alone, we've seen games like Destiny Sword, Volterra 2, and many more that reap the rewards of being on a platform like Steam. Of course, there's downsides, namely being we as players don't really get to see the publishing side of things, so it's not up to us to dictate what games or when we will get them. And so far, most of the major crowdfunded titles and hugely anticipated games like Crowfall and Pantheon, Ashes of Creation even, hasn't been very clear on if they do plan to be on Steam right from the get-go or just focus on their own stuff. But overall, right now, I am pretty satisfied that we are here in 2020 and we'll have most of the top MMOs on Steam by the end of the year. In fact, four out of the traditional big five will be on it. And you can already guess which one is missing. Will Activision Blizzard ever put World of Warcraft on Steam? That's a discussion for another time, but for now, there is no universe in which you can tell me that MMORPGs will not benefit from being on Steam in 2020. No chance. So, what are your thoughts on more MMOs coming to Steam? And which one would you like to see make the jump next? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit the like button for the love of MMOs, and hey, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more MMO news, reviews, and all that good stuff. I am Jeremy Adrian, and I thank you for watching.